ladies and gentile men, boys, oh. yeah, it's coming in hot, sorry about that, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back, welcome back, I'm your host, Man of Letters, uh, here to bring you knowledge, information, and at, hopefully at the very least a bit of entertainment, and um, some new things have come to the surface. We, I would like to bring in divination in, its, in all its forms. There has, there hasn't, well, there has been quite an extensive history of um, you associating really any form of divination with demons. Any sort, whether it's consulting the stars, whether it's rune stones, chicken bones, flint stones, depth tones, all of it. It's all, it's, it's all and so I, I wanted to have a conversation because, you know, they say it's, a, they, they call it a spiritual warfare out there. And so I would like to get to the bottom of it. I, I want to stay, com I, you guys know me. I, I prefer being as objective as possible when it comes to things like these. I don't want to... I, I don't want to come off as I, as either side. Would you guys like a cookie? I have butter cookies. Would you like... Anyone want, anyone want cookies? Uh, Azrael, it's complex because Hollywood demonizes it. Yes. One, yes, it's complex complex to yes hollywood demonizes it but even before that the church demonized it so i'm going to give you guys my thesis statement if you guys remember from school your thesis statement tells you what your whole paper is going to be about and then you sort of break down the thesis statement into different paragraphs etc etc uh first things first though we have man of letters merch on the etsy shop check out the man of letters merch though how dope are these? We have hoodies and crewnecks. We're running very low on everything I have, which is a good thing. But look at the dope mandala or sigil in the middle. It's super cool. So thank you guys for supporting. Uh, this video is also brought to you by the uh, Man of Letters Patreon squad. And let me get the name of the Patreon members right now so that we can give credit where you know where where where, uh, where credit is due so thank you patrons um we have jd uh, which is our boy lemuria ashley 1111 of course john smith jennifer wickstrom so a lot you guys know salavia my boy buddy so thank you guys for um thank you guys for supporting on the patreon appreciate the hell out of you and um without further ado Let's go ahead and uh... Tarot is not demonic and you shouldn't be speaking on it if you are not a tarot reader, period. Gloria Venez! Whoa, it seems we have struck a nerve. Glo Gloria! It seems we have struck a nerve. Good, that means I'm doing my job. If I have struck nerves, you can best believe that Keith... Aw, oh, man. You cursed us. <laughs> you cursed us, Gloria. Gloria. Um, no, no, no. She. I mean, she. She's right. Uh, uh, shut up. You're on the wrong channel to be a dusty. <laughs> That's funny. Um, oh no, you don't have to delete that. You can. We can bring that back. We can. We can bring that back. No, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. I, I'll allow that. I'll allow that. How do we... Oh, Gloria, I'm sorry. I, I wish I could bring back your deleted message, but but um, I definitely... Judges will allow that. Will allow that. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll, re, I'll repost your what you had to say, Gloria. I mean, it's important. So I reposted what Gloria had to say. Um, spicy. We're already getting... We're already getting spicy <laughs> in the comments. I like it. Yeah, your boy is, your boy is, uh, your boy is, uh, Aries, 
sun and Pisces moon. So we got that steaminess. So a little bit of unnecessaries from our Aquarius rising. So you know we like it spicy. I'm down for the spice. Um, that being said, let me give me a chance to give my goddamn thesis statement. Gloria? Give me a chance. Give me a chance. Hear me out. Hear me out. That's all I ask, Gloria. Stick around. Unless you left already. In which case, curse you. I hate people who come in here. Just drop some sideways shit and then don't stick around. Stick around. Take your shoes off, Gloria. Stay a while. Take your shoes off, Gloria. Stay a while. Okay, here's my the here's my thesis statement. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. My name is Keith. You're my letters, knowledge, information, and entertainment. Today's talk is on whether or not tarot is demonic or not. Uh, I have tea. I have some homegrown dank. And we have butter cookies if you guys want some butter cookies. I can share it to you. We can, I can NF I can I can NFT a butter cookie right now, and and uh, give it to you guys. Okay, here's my thesis. <clears throat> Throughout the dawn of time, man has gazed upon the natural world in wonder. Man has done whatever it can in order to prevail over the natural phenomena of the world. Uh, uh oh, looks like we're buffering. <laughs> no! I fucking hate technology sometimes, you guys. I hate it so much. I might have to just start doing these on Patreon because... It appears... It, it appears the stream... Can you guys see me? <laughs> the dawn of time. I, I think it, it shows... Sorry, I'm pausing. It shows on my end that the whole video feed has just stopped working. So, um, so sad. Oh, so frustrating. I'm so sorry, you guys, that this that this happens so frequently. It breaks my heart. It really does. Oh, it's retrograde. That's right. I did a couple during retrograde. Balls. Ah, so sad. So sad. I'm trying. I'm. I. I fixed the bit rating. I cranked everything up that needed to be cranked up, and it's just. It still. It seems to just not be. Uh, it just. Nah, it's not with me sometimes, huh? What. What. Do I have to sacrifice? I'll make some chicken noodle soup tomorrow if I have to. What do I have to sacrifice? Okay, okay you can see now. Um. Man has always tried to wrap his mind around the natural world. The stars have been above us since the dawn of time, obviously before that. Now, using the stars to predict the world is by no means in and of itself demonic because it's a form of, uh, you know what, I might... I know Christians definitely definitely gave us a name. How do you guys feel about me ending this live and opening it back up on Zoom? We might have to do that. If there's even anyone left in the room still, it looks like it might have kicked all of you guys out of the room. <clears throat> so sad. YouTube told me it kicked everyone out of the room. If there's anyone in here, just comment. <laughs> Otherwise, I might end it and go and launch it back up with Zoom. I seem to not have any problems with the Zoom.
Demons are a genius frequency. Well said. Well said. <sighs> Alright. Now that my whole presentation has been thwarped, um, we'll go with Sir Gabriel. Alright, so... There are no religions in the world outside of Christian, outside of the Abrahamic religions, that have demonized any form of divination. Tarot is more modern, which is why I used it. Um, however, all forms have been outlawed by the Christian sect. Um, and prior to that, it didn't exist at all. You're, we're talking shamans interpret dreams, which is divination. Uh, Native Native Americans interpret dreams, which is divination. They interpret the stars, which is divination. All cultures from around the world are using etheric, uh, etheric sort of modules to help themselves predict or determine or influence the natural world. Um, it wasn't until the introduction of Christianity... In the Abrahamic religions, where it sort of became demonized, which, to be fair, is the majority of human history. I mean, he, the Jewish religion's been around for four thousand years. That's about half of modern man, if you follow traditional timelines. Um, with that being said. The number one criticism of tarot being de demonic is, or that I've read, comes from followers of Christ. Comes from followers of Christ. Uh, the story goes like this. I used to be into tarot, and then bad things happened, and then I found Jesus, and I'm saved, and everyone should follow my route because tarot and all forms of divination are super evil and as a result you should not follow it and so if i may my thesis it looks like we've got feed coming through um if there are beneficial entities existing on the other side of the veil then there is, by definition, entities that don't have your best interest, right? Because polarity, because balance, because that's just how existence is. If you've got one, you have to have its opposite. So is it possible that your tarot readings, that your dream interpretations and dreams, the conversations with the other side, with the dead, whoever it is, is it possible that you are being influenced by a demonic entity. The answer is abso-fucking-lutely. Absolutely. I'm not saying tarot can't be used for bad or, or, uh, or can't be influenced by demonic entities. However, that doesn't mean that all of it's bad. It is balance. It is the practitioner, like Gloria said at the beginning of the chat. It is the it is the person who doesn't know what they're doing becoming possessed by something. And possession comes in many forms. It comes as it does in Hollywood, where, you know, your head's rotating and you're vomiting all over the place. But it also comes, a possession of the mind can happen only in the mind. It doesn't have to be your body. It could be possession of an influence. It could be a possession of an idea. It could be possession of a philosophy. Uh, we can become possessed by anything, and it just takes little triggers here and there, and that can happen when you're dabbling with the subtleties, the subtle practices. Um, and when I say demonic, no, that I'm I mean demonic as it's used in the modern day, because demon, which I believe comes from the Greeks, is the is only the muse that influences someone, so. All the great minds of the Romo, Roman, Gr Roman Greco era, all the biggest ones claimed that their success didn't actually come from them. 
they they claim that it came from their demon, aka their muse, these disembodied spirits that would give information to the artist, to the poet, to the general, to whomever it may concern. And of course, when Christianity sort of took over the world, you know, towards the collapse of the Roman Empire, anything that wasn't in their book was demonic. And the funny thing is that even things that were part of the Christian Orthodox, even if you know, even if that was or if that was still part of your tradition, it was still considered demonic if it didn't make it inside of your book. Who decided what goes in the book? Well, it was a human of the middle of the Dark Ages, and who knows what sort of fuckery is going on with that. Point being, objectively speaking, if tarot or divination were demonic forms of practice, you would see that in cultures spread throughout the world. In fact, I would go as far as to argue that the Christian religion might have the least to say about what is or what isn't demonic when it comes to divination or, or even how to properly go forward with divination. For example, um, the Abrahamic religions only worship their God, the God, and that's it. There's no communing with the dead. There's no communing with the spirits. There's no communing with the natural world. You, you can't even you can't even try to commune with a tree. Even communing with a tree was considered witchcraft and you could be burned at the stake for it. You know what I mean? So when it comes to just, you know, 101, you know, divination 101, communing with the spirits 101, the Christians are f light years removed from the scene because they don't even practice. Pretty much every other culture in the world practices some sort of communing with the other side of the veil other than their god. Whether it's their muses, their demons, whether it's your ancestors, your loved ones that have passed away. Um, of course, nature spirits. Um, what else? Or that were you know, dreams. The stars, though the stars are a little more fixed, it's not as you know malleable as the other forms of divination. However, um, you know, like the uh, so it's really when it comes down to it, is tarot demonic? Really, what it comes down to is why has Christianity demonized divination, and it comes straight out of the book of the Christians, which is um, thou shalt not commune with the dead or thou shalt not commune with spirits. And so the dead includes your your his, your ancestors, right? So your, if your ancestors are dead and you're trying to get some help with the ancestors, pray to the ancestors, have an altar for the ancestors, that is a form of devil worship. Because it can... No. The question I asked is a little... Uh, It's a little vague, and any practitioner worth his or her weight in anything should tell you, well, like Azrael did earlier. He said it's complex because it's complex, and that's the answer. It's complex. Well, how, how could, what does it look like when divination goes dark? And of course, that goes from obvious to a little less obvious. A little more obvious would be like, hey, are you dabbling in, ent like, what's the purpose for dabbling with a certain entity? Are you trying to do bad things? Or are you trying to manipulate humans? This is the interesting part. Because some practices say you can't influence free will. That's a bad thing. So even if you're trying to influence the free will of people, using deep spirits even if you think it's for a good thing right the road to hell was paved is paved with good intentions that's why that saying exists because 
man is flawed. We're flawed to jealousy. We're flawed to envy. We're flawed to hatred, to broodiness. We're, we're flawed to, to all the things. And if you're not balanced and you go to the dark side, just like Thoth said in the Emerald Tablets, he said, if you're going to descend into the darkness, which you should, you must, and you're not balanced, you will be dissolved by the darkness. You will, you will come out the dark side. Um, and that's what tarot looks like, dark side. But I, I, I can't help but feel like, and this, of course, is mostly opinion, not based in any sort of mythological fact. Uh, how's that for a oxymoron? Um, we'll get we'll get back to that. Actually, we'll get back to that. Uh, I want to make sure. We're still, nothing weird's going on. The feed is still feeding. Thank you guys for coming in. If you're just here, for just tuning in, allow, my, allow myself some self-promo in presenting the Man of Letters merchandise line, which is a sweater that you see before you. Uh, it's cool. It comes in three colors. You can find them on my Etsy shop. I ship them worldwide, baby, and they're really cool. We have our little Man of Letters sigil in the face. It's nice. So thank you for allowing me that moment of self-promo. Uh, the feed looks good. I think that's good. I think that's good. I think that's good. Um... The only thing evil are people, honestly. I would say there's definitely evil entities out there you know what i mean like one time i had this lucid dream where these demons were chasing me and then i went lucid in the lucid dream and these tasmanian looking devil demons turned into these alien looking amazonian women looking creatures and they told me that if i only knew what was if i only knew what i was capable of that i would devour them and they seemed sentient. They didn't seem like they were a part of my dream. They seemed like they were... They felt like they were entering my dream. Be that as it is. Uh, you're right. People are evil. But people are also fucking great. People are amazing. People are everything. The, the capacity for humanity is, is as terrible as it is beautiful. And it is as beautiful as it is terrible. Life must compensate, or, or, or life always aims to compensate. Even if it misses its mark, it always aims for compensation. Remember that. Your feelings, your emotions, your moods, every, light, light, dark, every, everything aims for harmony. Um, people tend to not know what they're doing when it comes to conversing with disembodied spirits. And even more than that, I believe that people can be possessed, you know, can go dark side and can purpose purposefully mislead people. And like, I believe that someone could be like, hey, here's my course on divination, follow these and you're going to have the life of your dreams. And say they're dark side and they can just plant subconscious or even conscious little tidbits here and there and guide you in such a way to where you start practicing dark side. Like how is that? If you can learn to practice light side, then you can obviously learn to practice dark side. Like this is no brainer shit. The capacity of evil is always there by all means. That's I'm not saying it's all fucking rainbows and unicorn farts out there you know what i mean throw me a bone here knowledge right knowledge is power that's what it really is when it comes down to it we just we knowledge is sort of no one is is a combination of knowing something as a concept and knowing something as a feeling it's that left brain right brain shit it's it's it's, it's a it's a perfect harmony of the masculine and feminine and that's knowledge it's, so, so it's a blanket something and to say that is evil or demonic is either lazy manipulative or just 
you or you just don't know or ignorance not a bad sort of ignorance just so you don't know like alan watts we don't know <laughs> um what was i saying um Ah, uh, yes. So how can you tell? Like, well, let me... Oh, so I'm going to go on with how can you tell? How can you tell if you're being led on by, de by a demonic disembodied spirit? But let me check. So that's part two. So next part of our, our, TED, our, our extended TED Talk is how can one tell if they are in fact... Worshipping some demons in the bad sense... <laughs> And the one we would like to avoid. How's that? So that's where we're going next. Feel free to chime in. Feel free to, to leave your, your, your tidbits, y'all. Your tidbits. That came out really wrong. I'm sorry. You know what I mean. And uh, I'm going to pack or doodle this schmoll. If anyone wants to join me in a smoke. Cheers, everybody. No, uh, Azrael is still here. I don't even believe in the labels of white or black. We all deal in the gray, in my opinion. Fair. The only evil thing are people on so There's beautiful things about destruction. Mars and tower energy is what I think comes to mind. Destruction sometimes is necessary. Um, nice. So... Gabriel Fisher, demons help humanity. That's funny. I was watching Eternals, and that's exactly what happened in Eternals. Were the Olympians, demons, influencing human? Okay, so I want to comment on um. What do you guys want to hear? Do I want me to keep going with how do you tell? Do you want me to do some comment? Some comment looking. We can go in any direction, but I want to make sure that we're talking about what you guys. Would like to hear. So by all means. Ooh, Empress Infinite. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. Um, demons are very mischievous. Demons are very mischievous. See, we have, all right, nice. We've got some, we have how we feel about demons coming up. Interesting. Okay. Um, we'll continue with. We'll continue. So check this. There are things people can do to make sure the Dems demons ain't coming through the bedroom window when we're trying to do our thing thing. You know what I mean, man? And the and the biggest one. The biggest one isn't the salt. Right. It's not. It's not. It's not a circle of salt. The biggest thing isn't sage. The biggest thing ain't copal. You know, it's not. It. The biggest thing is you, my brethren or sister. You are the biggest thing when it comes to whether or not a demonic entity is attracted and sticks around. Remember, you remember the lectures that we've done on resonance and vibration? How we evoke things by our baseline frequency, that happens with the dark side. Right? So think of, uh, oh, here's a good comparison. Remember in Star Wars when Yoda saw young Anakin Skywalker and he went, 
He goes, nah, man, I sense much fear in this boy. He goes, fear leads to hate. Oh, no, no. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to... F fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. So that's what Yoda said. So what was Yoda doing? He was going, hey... I know he's a great kid and all. On the outside, he seems cool. But there's a lot of fucking fear in this kid, man. And Yoda, being a master of goddamn hermetics, looked at the situation and said, Hey, if something with that much fear inside of it gets a hold of a whole bunch of power and doesn't fix the fear, we're going to have a big-ass fucking problem on our hands. And that's what he did. Yoda went, I don't know about this, man. I don't know. It's not. He's. He's dark. Kid's dark, man. There's a big ass hole inside of him, and he may be cute and cuddly and shit right now. But homeboy is going to blow up entire planets when he gets bigger. I could feel it, and he was right, because he could. He. Because he, he could use the force, baby. That's why. Anywho. There will be no ill doing. In any of your rituals outside of what you yourself bring with you and that is going to be you know 80 percent of what's going on 80 percent of the heat that's going on um reason being everything from your thoughts to your emotions and ultimately to your actions are all going to be influenced by your baseline operating system, your baseline frequency. Because what, what your baseline determines what you resonate with. What you resonate with determines what you read, who you talk with, what you spend your time doing. Um, and so if that base frequency is low, you best be careful. Then yes, by all means, make a circle of salt around your ass. Burn all the sage you can find in frankincense and whatnot um, to help. But like... Eh. Different deities are meant for different things, man. I think Azrael said it most. We, we, we're, we're dealing with... We're dealing with an archetype we're we're dealing with an energetic archetype and that energetic archetype satisfies a niche and for the most part it's not bad it's just it has its negatives and its positives so think of someone as lucifer and take yourself like pretend pretend you're an alien looking back on the planet and you're studying human lore 101 on saturn 20,000 years from now on a moon of Saturn or some shit like that, um, and you're studying you're studying humans 101, and you get to the part about Jesus, uh, and you're learning about the fall of this. So they go, oh, that they go, oh, that's just so. And they go, little Johnny, what happened in Catholicism? And little Johnny goes, well, uh, God made humans, and then he made no, God made angels, and then he made humans. And then he wanted the angels to serve the humans, and the angels were like, "I'm not really down for that, God. I thought we were your number one." And God goes, "No, you're not. You're actually number two. And they, some of the angels were like, "All right, whatever." And then some angels were super sad. Like some were, some were heartbroken. One was heartbroken the absolute most. Dude's name was Lucifer. He was like God's firstborn son, his right hand man. God loved him more than any of the other angels, and Lucifer loved God more than any of the other angels. It was just this classic fatherly son fucking duo, and they were literally taking over the cosmos. And God goes, sort of cuts him off, and he goes, fuck out of here. Lucifer, like, you ain't nobody, you ain't shit. The human, like, go serve the humans. And so Lucifer was just bent. Like, homeboy was fucking distraught. Um, or, like, it, it, you know murders are passion you know like think of humanity most murders happen out of passion that's like you know walking on a lover having sex or you know like, like passion that's where most murders come from they're not usually premeditated so lucifer was so you know it's just so we have lucifer we have god lucifer just heartbroken says fuck this god goes to war that's how pissed off he was 
gets cast out of heaven. He was the light bringer, knowledge, truth. He was the truth. He was the truth. The, 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 the Catholics said it themselves, teacher. Lucifer was truth with a capital T. That was his role. He was the bringer of light. Why they called him Lucifer? Lu Luch. Lux Eterna, eternal light. And he got cast down to heaven, to earth, and then went rogue, went dark side. Uh, he was consumed by the anger and the hate, akin to young Anakin Skywalker, went dark side. And then now he's trying to just poison God's lot. And then the teacher would go, damn, Johnny, you fucking nailed that. A plus. You guys should all study like Johnny does. Um, so my Saturn moon planet story is over. Um, point being, if you're able to look at archetypes of energy like that, you can see where if you wanted truth, if you wanted, if you wanted illumination... You, that's why people would go towards something like Lucifer. Um, but if like you say you're a dark ass person, then you're going to be consumed by Lucifer and all that is the demon, the demonicness that is Lucifer. And that goes with any sort of deity. I'm speaking mythologically speaking here. Um, that's how the practices unravel. That's what the text, that's what the literature shows on the topic. Um, I sort of freestyled the part where you are the biggest concerning factor, but I'm sticking to my guns on that one because that would make the most sense. What do you guys think? Amir, aren't the aren't demon fallen angels? So no, um, that's what I mean. We're we're getting weird with the etymology of the words we're using. So when I say demon, I just mean like a dark entity, a demonic dark entity, as the Christian Christians or really or, or, or any other modern day person for that matter would describe it. What you're talking about, Amir, there are the fallen angels who were the ones that were cast out of heaven alongside Lucifer. I can't remember how many there were. There were a few dozen, maybe. Those are angels. Those aren't demons. Those are the fallen angels. Now, the fallen angels are able to distort spirits on the material world. They can corrupt spirits of, the, of, of earth and then create demons. So fallen angels corrupt and in corruption create demons. The, the demons are basically soulless creatures that do the bidding of the fallen angels. That's how angels and demons work. According to Christianity and Judaism, all the Abrahamic religions, Islam, um, and maybe others? I don't know. But, yeah, I hope that answered your question. Uh, it's what you approach them for that dictates the experience you ultimately have. Well said, Ezreal, well said. Um, I've done much more research than practice. Shit, ain't we all done it? <laughs> I have not tried to do any summoning of any creatures at all. Oh, I don't think so. Not consciously, at least. I mean, technically, if you have an altar to your favorite Egyptian deity or whatever, that's technically a summoning. You may not be wanting to summon their acute awareness, their acute presence in the form of their like co their corporal form at your bedside, but you're at least summoning their creativity, just like the ancient Greeks did their muses. You're trying to summon, you know, WWJD. What would Jesus do? You're summoning the qualities, the archetype that is Jesus, so that you can better go through your life with some direction. Um, Lucifer had help with creating humans. When Eve took the bite from the apple, God was mad because humans were no longer God's creation. I mean, that's an interpretation. So I'm not sure if you asked me if that's right or wrong, Gabriel Fisher, what you were just talking about. Um, I 
Low frequency beings, yes. Can the Alti be your own body, your own consciousness? Whoa. <coughs> that one hit. There we go. <coughs> I found a jar of hash. <clears throat> All right, um, I find planetary magic to be more my lane versus angelic or demonic. Um, yeah, there's a lot of wolf. You brought me to my next part of my thesis. Oh, man, thanks, Azrael. I'm so stoked. So there's, Azrael just said, which per a perfect segue into the next part of my presentation was, he says, I find planetary magic to be more my lane versus angelic or demonic. Um, here's the thing. It's a different ball game when you're trying to manipulate the entities of a sentient thing. Or I should say, the higher the sentience, the more difficult to control. Or maybe I shouldn't use the words difficulty. I should say, the more sentient the being that you are trying to control, the more sentient you should be as a being. So it's not about what's hard and easy, what's difficult or not. It's more about, are you there or not? You know, where you at? Trees and animals, the elements... These are like, they're not as complex as you and I. Like humans are almost at the apex of, of sentient complexity, I think. That's, that's a total opinion. I'm not saying guys should believe that. But it seems to be that when it comes to manipulating the world, that humanity is the best at doing that, at manifesting. Maybe shy of the earth itself, but of all the species of plants on, on the earth, all the species of animal on the earth, um, humanity is at the top when it comes to manifestation. Whether it's manifestation on a beautiful, you know, natural level where we beautify the planet or our capacities for destruction and we fucking drop a nuke so big we crack the earth in half like whether it's for the good or for the bad the humans are on top it's because we are more highly evolved sentient beings um so it's easier to control things underneath us but if you're talking about a sentient a, a thing that has its own consciousness separate from yours and its linear time frame is 2,000 years, and it's sort of been bouncing around doing its thing. Like, like, like you ain't its first rodeo, but you might be, it might be your first rodeo, but it sure ain't the entity's first rodeo. You know what I mean? And that's, that's where we got to be careful. That's why, same thing, Azrael. I don't fucking, I'd much, I'd much more divinate some tea leaves than resurrect bail so he can do my bidding you know what i mean not that i'm doubting myself it's just like yo i gotta prepare for that I ain't, who, ain't nobody got time to for that type of preparation to be able to handle to handle an entity of that caliber even if those entities were created by humans ourselves or at least captured. I don't know if they, you know what I mean, or, or 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 transposed somehow. Venus magic on a Friday will bring big rewards. Ooh. Nice input, Azrael. Thank you. Jaded gems. No, absolutely. For the love of God. Can we all agree that good and bad are not social constructs? Or or can we please not write them off as 
their social contracts as if oh they're unimportant they don't really mean anything do they they're just social constructs it's like it's only a social construct because we had to fucking have a conversation about it you know what i mean and how can we not have a conversation about something really important if we don't have words to describe what we're talking about with no common ground so we invented language so that we could fucking communicate with one another and then Anywho, there is such thing as good and bad, and there is not such a thing as good or bad, as all the hermetic answers will give you, but so I'm not such an ass, what I will say is, all you have to do is take the situation and look at and give it a frame, give it a context. You use whatever's necessary, and you will be able to judge for that specific situation based on your moral, your ideals, your goals, and you can determine whether something is, yes, objectively speaking, good or bad. Not fucking wishy-washy. I know I'm really bummed. Or maybe I'm not bummed. <coughs> it is what it is. I'm sure something good will come of it. We just haven't found it yet. But I really hate how our last decade, 10, 15 years, this conversation of everything is subjective, there's no such thing as good or bad. There's no such thing as black or white. And there's no such thing as like opposites. People don't like opposites. Like there's, there's everything wants to be blurred. Everything wants to be um, not equal. I mean, I, I mean, at least I think the goal is for everything to be equal, which is a just and worthwhile goal. But I think what it ended up becoming is sameness, and sameness is not is not the same as equal. Anywho, um, there are, objectively speaking, good and bad decisions. Uh, it's just up to you to look at that situation and judge that for yourself. So that's why I said some, uh, that, and, and you're also, and the uh, and the, the other side of the coin is yes, who fucking knows if the decision you made is actually right? You know what I mean? Like, the, the right, your right decision could be to go to the gym but you were too lazy to go and one could make the argument oh well what if i got in a car accident and died that day what if my laziness saved my life what's well, like yeah fair so fair you're 100 percent right we we can we, we it is both however again think of the micro are you going to base your life off of i'm just going to not do what i need to get done because i might get hit by a car like, that's fucking ridiculous. You know what I mean? The argument is ridiculous and it's not helpful at all. Even if it's true. Because it's like, because then you have, then, then you're just like, you can't make decisions. You, you, you get anxiety because you can't move and then you get depression and then you get depression so you can't leave the house and then you don't leave the house and then which, which adds to the depression. And like, if you don't have goals and you can't make decisions, your life is going to suck. Remember, it's all about balance. It's all about it's all about both sides, both the subjective and objective. Yes, you can't know if something is ultimately a good or bad decision on a cosmic fucking level. Let's not be ridiculous. But as humans, we have to decide what we want, even if it's the wrong thing. Even if the decision is to have no decision, still make the decision. Like, oh, you want to be a vagabond and just go with the wind? Then make that your decision. Make the decision, hey, I just want to go wherever I want to go. I want to take a train and end up in Montana. I like, I want no, not like, I'm okay with having nothing. I'm okay with having no money. I'm okay with not, with, with the stresses that come along with that life. And you take a sincere look at what you want, what's going to make you happy, how to get there. And then boom, if it's total decisionlessness, that's awesome. The problem is most people haven't decided what they want. And as a result, every decision they make isn't good or bad because you didn't want to get anywhere anyways am i making sense hopefully i'm not talking in circles but i'm trying to make sense um like if you don't have anywhere to go it doesn't matter where you go in other words should you go left or right doesn't matter i have no destination <laughs> then yes decisions don't matter um, but I'd strongly urge against having having a blanket a blanket statement thought of 
good and bad are social constructs because that's fucking dark side real fast. That means, imagine if you've got a, a, a whole world, forget a nation, imagine you have a whole world of people where they don't believe in good or bad, which means they can, which means they can be convinced in any situation that what's happening is good. Uh, can you imagine how dangerous that would be for the human race? For everyone to think that there's no such thing as good or bad? It just depends on how you look at it. So if you, you know, just look at the bright side, it's a good thing, right? That means you can be just shit on day, on, day in and day out and be treated like subhuman and be okay, and you'll be okay with it. You'll be genuinely okay with it because, because there's no such thing as good or bad, right? Maybe that, maybe I'm, maybe this is how I get to my, you know what I mean? It's da it's a slippery slope. Slippery slope. Um, it is. So there was that. That was. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for listening. Loud pipes. Said something super important that I'm gonna that I'm gonna repost again. darkest place is the womb amen empress yeah it is yeah there's nothing there's nothing inherently wrong about the darkness because the darkness is the void and you need the void for things to exist like you need you need nothingness for something to exist because so, because a thing has to exist somewhere it's like the container where nothing exists so that other things can occupy space in there, that's the void. That's the feminine. That's the, the thing that contains the all, the absolute of integration. And it is dark. It is, it, it is the absence of, it is the nothing, you know? Hmm. But seriously, Loud Pipes had it right when he said, don't conjure up entities. Don't be messing with demons unless you got your own personal demons under control. Because when your demons meet the other demons, they is going to be partying and getting down and having a real good time. However, I'm just shooting from the hip here. I wouldn't say, or, or, or actually, let me refine what you just said, Loud Pipes. Yes, I agree. And in addition to, if you do decide to summon said things, and you and your and you don't have your internal rule taken care of, that's when possession happens. That's when instead of you influencing the entity, the entity starts influencing you. So you are now doing the entity's bidding when you wanted the entity to do your bidding. Some people are okay with that. Some people are totally okay with that. They they are happy relinquishing a bit of control so that they can have a massive amount of power. You know what I mean? All right, all you know. So like, so uh, again, Star Wars does a good job in acting how this shows up in human affairs. Think of the dark side. It's all about giving in to your power, giving in to your emotions, giving in to your rage, being completely submissive to your emotions. That was the dark side. And they said it time and time again, and the light side agreed. They said, hey, there is ultimate power with the dark side, much more than the light side. But you have to, you, you ha you have to become possessed by it for it to work. And then think of uh, think of the, the the Jedi's. The Jedi's were the exact opposite. What the Jedi taught you was to control your emotions, control, po poise yourself, 
Remember, um, Yoda asked Luke, he said, hey, why do you want to become a Jedi? And Luke goes, oh, because of the advent, I'm paraphrasing. He goes, the adventure, Yoda. Like, I want the, like, it's just the, and Yoda laughs. He goes, hmm, and scolds him and says, Jedis don't seek adventure. Like, that's not, you're not a Jedi. You're not worthy of being a Jedi because you want adventure. Like, adventure is not worth, that's not why we're here. We're not trying to have the time of our lives. Like, we control our emotions. And that includes the happiness, too. How many of the Jedi do you see jumping up and down? Secret handshakes and shit. Joyous, boistful laughter. You know what I mean? Never. Never. All of their emotions were under control. So it's, that's, a, that's a perfect representation of, of, of how those two qualities of energy show up in the world. Um, and as a result, they'll show up in your practices, they'll show up in your mind, they'll show up in your spirit, and they'll show up in your physical body. Because as above, so below, you know what I mean? Shit corresponds on every level. The difference is in the degree of manifestation. That's what the, that's what the difference is. Um, Yeah, well said. I loud pipes. You're dropping. You got to. You have to hold your own live here pretty soon, Mr. Loud Pipes. I like it. Thanks for dropping all the information in there. Dealing with the demons is part of life. <laughs> One could almost say dealing with demons is life. <laughs> Just a constant fucking duel between the demons. Um, however they manifest. How, however they may show their heads. Tori Indigo, what's wrong with happiness? Everything. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Nothing. Nothing should be wrong. Nothing seems to be wrong with happiness. Why would it have? Is there something? Do you know something I don't, Tori? I feel like I feel like you're playing coy with us right now, Tori. Hey, also everyone, thank you so much for coming through the live. I appreciate it. We're running lives every Monday, 6 p.m. PST, Pacific Coast, West Coast Live. What up, California? Shout out. Um. Yeah, thanks for hanging out and chatting and supporting the channel and commenting in the chat room. Um, we have Man of Letters merch out. It's on the Etsy shop. You can find the Etsy shop in the description. Thank you, my Patreon members. I'll go ahead and give you guys another shout out. Oh, did I close the page? Sorry, I closed the page. Um, thank you to the Patreon patrons who are JD, which is our boy Lemuria. Ashley, 11111, money sign. Thank you. Of course, John Smith. Jennifer Wickstrom, our Salabi, and my boy, Buddy Lenz. Thank all you guys for supporting the channel, the Patreon. Appreciate the hell out of it. Um, please, this is... I've given, I've given my presentation. Thank you for coming to the demonic presentation. Please, if you have any questions, ask them now. And we'll just go for another, I don't know, however long. A half an hour, hour? Probably, we'll see, but, but uh, yeah, thanks. Let me know what one. Please feel free to burn some oregano with us. Mana letters, we have our own farm here where we grow our own. <clears throat> Devil's lettuce. Um, slide up in that DM, hit me up, shoot me an email or something. We be gracing the entire nation. Uh, so hit me up and get that or that organic homegrown devil's lettuce. I'm not playing. I just don't understand why some spiritual people are against expressing it. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying, Troy. So the question is, everyone. 
the question is, everyone, um, why some spiritual people are against are against exchanging it? Is that a yeah? It is fire. It is. Um, okay, so back to our analogy with the Jedi who wanted to contain their emotions, including the good ones, like happiness. It's not that. It's not that happiness is bad. It's just that the more you give yourself over to your emotions, the more you give yourself over to your emotions. That that's why happiness is bad. I say bad like quote unquote bad. Obviously, we want to aim for for happiness. Obviously, we want to aim for the higher vibrations of things. That's the goal. Like By all means, that is our objective goal, is to aim toward the growth of our spirit and our soul. Back towards source. The, infinite, the infiniteness of vibrational raising. Um, but the spiritualists... And I know you're talking about the ones that contain the happiness that are always at peace is because when you give in to one, you give in to all of them. You know, and a good example would be like, um, it might be a microcosm only in my life. So tell me if you guys have actually experienced this on your end. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong here, but. My friends in the past who have been prone to the most excitement when something goes wrong have the biggest negative reaction when it, or 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 really good react, really good response when it's good, and then a really bad when it's bad. There's no, they're either super fucking hot or they're super cold when it comes to their to their um to their like that that reaction, and that's sort of what the Buddhist presentation is of that Tao is to be completely out of the picture of anything of happiness of sadness of love of hate it's just pure experience because that's what the all is the all isn't happy the source isn't isn't love like these things are extensions of it Love is an extension of the all, one of the highest, if not the highest expression of the all. But it is not the all. It is it is a part of it. You know what I mean? And so to latch on to happiness is to latch on to something that is a very human sensation, a very physical sensation, um, which they're trying to ascend. They want to ascend all this shit. They want to go back to nothingness. To source to like non-duality, um, and that's what ha- that I mean. And that's what non-duality is. If you imply happiness, you immediately imply sadness because they're the same thing. So like that's why that like, that's the the Jedi path of not giving in to your emotions is to transcend all of it. Um, not saying that's the right way. Your, your other character, like say. Uh, Harrison Ford played uh, what the hell are you playing Star Wars Han Solo so Han Solo was a great character he was more people's favorite than the Jedi characters a lot of the time and the reason being Homeboy had some spice to him like he was a, f- a mischievous fox he was a he was a smuggler he was a criminal you know what I mean he, he hung with the dirtiest filthiest scum of the entire galaxy and he did it well you know what i mean but he was also light side so it gave him this really interesting character superhuman but super interesting he's in the cuts and like that's what i mean it's not it, it, yeah. alan watts said it right that if, if, if a person doesn't have a bit of salt to him a bit of a bit of bitterness like they're going to be a really boring stale person it's like not adding salt to your soup soup's gonna taste like shit you know what i mean i don't care how many i don't care how much kale you put in the hot water if you don't add any spices it's gonna taste like shit and like that's harrison ford's character 
he is purposefully flogged to give him a good story, a good entertainment value. People could connect him, connect with him more because humans are flawed. So we see flawed characters like, oh my God, he makes stupid decisions like me. Besties, you know what I mean? So there's, we're human. What? Welcome to planet Earth. You know what I mean? Welcome to planet Earth. And good luck. Bon, ch bon chance, as the French say. Um, anywho, again, the qu this is this is why it's important for us. Let's give it a break. Man. Oh, we're back. Okay. The reason why it's important to have conversations like, um, oh, are good and bads just social constructs? Because that's how they're presented. There's no such thing as good or bad. Um, It all depends on what you want. Oh, Amen. He froze again. None, huh? None. Are we back? Nice. All right. It's the Archons. Um, yeah, you guys got it. On high, yeah, the higher the peak, the lower the emotional valley. There you go. There you go, Azrael. I know I talk too much sometimes, but you guys basically sum the whole thing up in two sentences. I like it. This is what's happening. You guys give me my thesis statement, and then I write the essay. So you thesis statement. Keith essay. You thesis statement, Keith essay. I like it better that way, actually. Little yin and yang, you know what I mean? The thesis statement is like your masculine energy, very direct. Oh, that's such a good I'm a, that's such a good analogy for masculine and feminine. Your thesis statement, two to three sentences, high impact, high engagement, straight to the point. This is exactly what I think, and this is what I'm gonna say about it. Boom, thanks. Uh, that's your masculine mind. Concise, well defined shorts <clears throat> and then the rest of the essay the body of the essay is what contains all of the fucking information that directs you to my one point that's like man look at that we got some masculine and feminine power magic going here you guys well done i see you guys working I see you guys working what's up vivian hello 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 so i guess I guess it's all in perspective. Some see this life as a burden of lessons while others see it as a gift. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's certainly like altruistic version. But it, it can also be as easy as buying a house. You know, so a lot of people want to buy a house and it's a, it's a passive thought, which is great. The, you have the desire, you have the emotional input. That that's the desire is is the fuel for it. And and then you go, well, how, have you just like have you decided how you're gonna do that? And the answer is usually, kind of. And it, it, but if I ask you, hey, I mean, do, where's your where's your write out? I need to see steps one through ten on how you're gonna get this house. And they go, what do you mean write out? Like you yeah, you didn't write out like. How how much do you need to save? <laughs> how big? What does the house look like? Do you have like? Do you know you where? Do you, have you figured anything out and put it down? And it's like well not not really you know and so you go well okay I need to make this amount of money okay well then I need to change jobs well I can't I need skills okay well then you need to get some new skills so that you can change jobs so that you can make more money and like all these little alterations you make about buying the house start to orient your objective good and bad that's when you know okay is is there such thing as good or bad yes absolutely i need to save fucking 500 dollars every month or i'm not getting a house so if i spend a hundred dollars on food and drink because i got carried away then that is a bad decision that is a straight up terrible decision 
and that that's how good or bad works you know what i mean like there's a there's a you know yes it's all perspective but yes you you also need to set a perspective so that within that perspective you know what is your good or bad it's helpful it's helpful for people who who are in the spiritual world and 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 like i like i that want to see everything as pure potential because it is like that's that's the beauty of this world is that it is pure potential but we can be driven mad by the potential of infinity because how do you choose when everything is within your grasp <laughs> tell me i can have anything yeah okay what do you want i have no idea all of it is up for grabs i only have so many years i want to do them all there's no way i'm doing them all by the time i die so how do i reorient what i really fucking want that i can manage in the next 30 years if i'm lucky you know what i mean so and then you stand and you fucking orient yourself okay this is bad I need to stop doing this. I don't care if everyone else thinks this is a good thing. I don't care if everyone else thinks it's okay if I do this. No. I fucking know myself well enough to know that I need to stop doing this as often as possible. Often as possible. That is bad. With a capital B, I don't care what pagan ass website you guys follow telling you there's no such thing as good or bad. I am not doing that thing right there. I refuse. Anywho, I'm all out of uh, I'm all out of my butter cookies. Uh, Ed the Alchemist, yeah, brother, you said that perfectly. Actually, I mean, there's different. Obviously, there's different schools of thought on to what archons are. It's tough, man. It's like it's it's tough. It's a it's a tough world to argue what is and what isn't when we can't prove half the shit it even exists in the first place. That being said, I certainly subscribe to exactly what you talked, what you just mentioned, Ed. In that, the archons are the gatekeepers, are the ones who basically <clears throat> check your vibration. And if your vibration matches the vibration of whatever they're guarding, then they'll let you in. That's all the Archons are. They're not judging you good or bad. They're going, like, they could care less about good or bad, really. It'd be like you sitting at a computer, and on the left, there's a number that says 100, and on the right, there's a number that says anything. If the number says 100 or above... They let you in. If it says 99 or below, they turn you around. And that's all the Archons are doing. They're just like, yes, no, yes, no, no, yes. It's nothing evil about it. So that's what I subscribe to. Of course, there are different versions. I'm sure you ask 20 different people. You're going to get 20 different answers. Except you and I apparently had the same answer. So nice. Shout out. Shout out to us. Sorry, was I banging that in your ear? <laughs> My bad. <clears throat> well, anyone, do we have any more questions or shall we uh, slowly begin to... Yo, before... Hey, hey, think. Check out the merch on the Etsy shop. Super dope. I'll post a link. Maybe I didn't put the answer. We have cool... We have white hoodies. We have garnet hoodies and we have black hoodies. And we also have... All three of those in crew necks, but the the sizes are almost running out. I only have mediums left of the crew neck, so sorry about that. Um, we're selling out of the blacks. The blacks are pretty much gone. Um, garnets and the white hoodies are at about a tie, so I can't find the link, but. <clears throat> How do you keep all this stuff in your head? <laughs> I don't know. That's a that is a that is a damn good question. I have 
I am cer I am certain it shouldn't all be there, but it is. So, um, I read a lot. <laughs> actually, no, I don't. I don't even read a lot anymore. Actually, my reading game has been god awful as of late. Forgive me, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. These are my sins. It has been well, only a couple weeks, but it's been. Two or three years since I've had a consistent reading program. I'm sorry. Um, oh, no. I was now that I'm not being such a dick, Vivian. To answer your question most accurately and sincerely, it's because I teach a lot. And the more I teach, the more I learn. And the more I, the more I have to learn how to articulate... What it is that's in my head, the the better I am at articulating it, and therefore the better I am at like recalling it and stringing together coherent thoughts to where I make sense and I can pull. I mean, I've just been doing it for fucking such a long time that my brain has wired itself to act this way. Like when I watch something, and I don't even like this anymore. It actually kind of bugs me when I watch shows or read books. 90 to 95 percent of the time i'm analyzing what's going on behind behind the scenes how I, how i can understand that and how i can teach that to someone else like so as i'm taking in information i'm already organizing it in such a way to where it needs to be taught to you guys and as a result my i'm just like it kind of sucks though, because I can't just enjoy something for the sake of enjoying it. I'm like deconstructing it and putting it back together in my own words, and um, it's the best way to learn something. Which is why I started doing that. My old university professor taught us that the best way to learn something is to teach it. For all the reasons that I just gave you, you should teach something because it forces you to understand it in a different way. Um which has all sorts of benefits. And that's actually why I wrote my book on hermetics. I figured what better way to teach something than to write a book on it because I wanted to learn about it. What better way to learn hermetics than to teach it? What better way to teach it than to write a book on it? That was my thought process. And so a couple years later, I had my first book written on the hermetic philosophy. Nonetheless, Quite dr quite dry material for your first book choice, Keith. <laughs> I grew up like reading Lord of the Rings and shit, and I go just write the driest philosophical text. <laughs> what a two thousand year old art or more. I mean, it's awesome. Saying it like that, it's actually super dope. I'm sure you guys can appreciate it. Right. Well, if you're talking trash about their mix, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Hermes, sorry, Thoth. My bad, homie. Damn, Tori Indigo. Tori Indigo dropped some heat on us right now. He said, I had to marinate on it for a minute, Azale. Ultimately, detachment is always needed in order to navigate as the explorer and the captain. Yes, that's my personal favorite. So I'm certainly not, I'm not the scallywag pirate, you know, just on the open seas pillaging and plundering, at least not in this lifetime. But I'm also not Buddha on the mountain trying to transcend all my emotions. I'm somewhere in the middle where I want to feel as deeply as possible, which means exposing myself to the ultimate sadness but i also i also want to be able to control that more you know what i mean and i'm able to do that by learning the mechanics of the world by like you said tori by detachment because here's a good brain activity if you close your eyes and, and, and imagine the pendulum swinging back and forth on one side um they say on one side is love and the other is hate. And it's swinging back and forth between love and hate, right? 
you can't that's the law of rhythm that the energy swings back and forth between love and hate polarity telling you that there are opposites and that they are the same and the rhythm the pendulum that's swinging back and forth just tells you that the energy will always go back and forth and if you were to freeze that pendulum mid swing the pendulum would be lined up with a certain part of the scale from from love to hate and that's what determines good or bad where it man is going back Oh, we're back. Um, they got us. I, I I don't think we got turned around that time. I think that time we actually, I think we actually skipped planes. And it's like when your Wi-Fi disconnects and reconnects, you kind of lose connection and it comes back. That's what happens. So we are now existing slightly higher squad, but we had some interference issues. En route. Going to commercial all last night. <laughs> it was totally commercial. That's hella funny. I should. I wonder if I can build in commercial breaks into OBS and like just click a different scene and it and it hits you a feed of like a twenty five second Man of Letters infomercial. <laughs> I I I think you can do that, right? You should be able to do that. Collab, what's up, brother? Um. Yeah, I don't know where you guys got cut off with that last ramble I did, but I don't know if I have it in me to give it again, so. Maybe, maybe, maybe the muses weren't having it. Maybe the muses were like, not today, Satan. We're going to hold this one off. Glass half full, half empty. Or the message could have been, Keith, hardwire your goddamn internet one time and stop trying to rely on Wi-Fi for running lives. Like, who does that? I do that, ancestors, because my Wi-Fi box is like half a mile away. And I can't run lives inside because my son is a maniac. And he there's no chill. So I have to be out here. So get me a 200-foot Ethernet cable or pipe it down. Make yourselves useful. Give some juice to the antenna or something, man. Come on. Salute. We need solutions. I need your. I need your solutions, not your bickering. Can we make that happen, please? Um, I've done it. It's effective marketing. All right, we're gonna have to do that then. We're gonna have to jump up. We're gonna, we're gonna have to step up our uh, our marketing merch game. Um, Ah, well, thank you guys for uh, spending time with the squad. We have 27 viewers, 26 likes. Nice. I can, deal those, I can do those numbers. I'm down for those numbers. Thank you guys. Appreciate that. 
Um, oh, you know what I didn't add to the OBS was my subscribe button in the background. Oh, Keith, you blew that one. Big sauce. Oh, well. Um, that being said, thank you guys for hanging out. Appreciate you being here. It's uh, it's been a fun one. I hope this was, I hope this was entertaining. I hope it was fun. I hope it made you happy. <laughs> Control the happiness, young Jedi. <laughs> Give in to your fear, Jedi. Give in to your anger. <laughs> I hope to play in a Star Wars movie before the day I die. And I hope I don't have to do any black magic Illuminati blood soul giving shit to get on the cast either. That would make me happy. It would. It really would. What's a mesh network, loud pipes? Am I that behind in the audio from this? If a mesh network is a reference to my Wi-Fi, then yeah. Can I, can I, is that, a, is that what you're telling me to look up? I'll look that up. Ooh, it is. All right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you, sir, loud pipes, loud and clear. I ha they are they are sitting in the search engine as we speak. Thank you. Um, loud pipes. It's not an outhouse, bro. Whoa. Whoa. You hear this guy hating on the digs? You talk, You hear this dude? You see this dude? This my boy right here. He, 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 he this my boy. He's out here all the time. This is his home. Homeboy called your house. You called your dick. Called your dick to our house. Homeboy ain't having it, dude. He said it's a. He said it's our den, good sir. This is referenced as our den. Not our outhouse. We do not do do in here. Do doings for outside. We are above that. We have we have ascended, past the Arconal Gate. That is outhouse, haven't we? It's alright, though. You didn't mean it. It's alright. Gotta dust them off. It's been a while since I've done any dusting in here. Does one dust a den? Do you dust a den? Maybe we should. Um, alright. Thanks, guys, for chilling. Asriel, it looked like you kicked it the entire time here. Uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks for hanging out. And thanks for being a member of the channel for such a long time, too. It's a den, you vizious den. And you're not invited. <laughs> you're not invited to my den. You guys can stay outside. How about this? I'll put an outhouse outside, and you guys can come to the outhouse all you want. You guys can come to the outhouse all you want. I'll be out back. There'll be a hole in it with a bunch of doo-doo. Because -doo. That's, what, that's what happens in outhouses. It's the herb talking. It's got to be. I, guess. I actually have all this stored in my head because when I burn herb, I channel Thoth the Atlantean. I think that's what happens. Or at least that's what I tell myself. I'm just like, where's my, where's my music at? I'm just like, hold on. Add media. Where's my media? Media. Let's see. A little... Share my den with a wooden mask and a, and a grow tent with a bunch of plants inside of it. It's a layer. <laughs> uh 
Onions have layers. Onions have layers. Can I can I smoke out that house though? You can smoke out the out. <laughs> I'm back. I'm logging off. It's just it's, it's a sign. We gotta go inside. Thank you guys. Um, sea flower, sorry that you had to wait so long before you could burn with us. What the hell? Um, how about this? I'm gonna end the stream so I can eat, and I'll open the stream back up, and I'll live stream some. I'll live stream my turns with Kenneth and um, Alan Watts. Smoke some herb if you want, sea flower. If you're, uh, if you're, if you're so, if you're so inclined. My dearest, my dearest, flor de la mer. Alright, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for support, for supporting the channel. And I'll see you in a minute. If you want to kick it, if not, see you. Uh, I'll see you when I see you.